So lift and roll the shoulders. Just spread your toes. Big toe, little toe. Raise one arm up and breathe out, go to the side. Come to the center and lower your arm. And raise the other arm up. Come to the side. Come back to the center and lower your arm. Pick up the foot and stretching, almost like that, stretching your toes. Move from side to side and circle and circle the other way and place your foot down. And then come to the other side so that you're lifting your heel move from side to side and then circle the ankle in one direction and circle the ankle in the other direction and release down. Bring your hands to your heart and then come to the mat to lie as we start the practice of Buddha Shuddhi. So and this is just one of them. So come to extend your left leg along the floor and hug your right knee into your chest. Just enjoy the hugging in of the right knee towards the chest. Circle the right knee in one direction and then circle the right knee in the other direction. And still holding the right knee in, turn your entire body to the left. So you hold your right knee still, then with your left hand, and roll up to the left. Your right hand can hold your right waist. And your head can either look up or to the right side, away from your knee. So this is a reclining twist. You can also, if you have to handle you get a cushion or support underneath your right knee. Breathing in and out. Extend your left foot and extend your left heel and then release and relax a little bit, but keep the length in your left leg. Just make sure that your right shoulder is away from your ear, it's not moving up towards the ear. And then gently roll onto your back, hug your right knee into your chest once more, and place your right foot on the floor and slide it away from you. Bounce your legs on the mat. And then slide your left knee in, hugging your left knee into your chest. And once more, just circle your left knee now in one direction and circle your left knee in the other direction and now still holding your left knee roll your entire body so that your hip lifts from the floor to the right you can place your right hand somewhere on your left thigh your left hand goes on your waist so that you're opening out, opening your left lung. Extend your right heel 
and then slightly release it. And your head can look upwards to the ceiling or it can look to the left, away from the direction of your knee. The first pose of hugging the knee into the chest looks at the foundational or Muladhara base chakra. And this particular pose looks at the next chakra up, which is just along the inside of the base of the spine, up towards the lower abdominal area. It's very close to the first chakra. And any kind of rotation is realigning the spine, but this is also allowing a, a, a rotation and blood to come into the abdominal area when we come back. So come back, hug the left knee into the chest once more. Hug the right knee into the chest, so both knees are hugged into the chest. And just gently rock from side to side. Place one foot and then the other foot. You can support your legs underneath the thighs, onto the ground. So your feet are hip width apart. You may lift your hands down into the ground to slightly lift yourself and be alive. So coming to keep right toes, lift your left knee, place your left ankle on top of your right thigh and open your left knee out to the side. And then very gently sway your knees from side to side. And this opens up um, certainly your inner hips, your groin area, which is connected to your lymph system at the lower area. But this also opens up and stretches slightly a very small muscle on the outside, linking your thigh, your leg to your upper leg to your hip, and it's a piriformis muscle. So your left leg underneath, to lift the left foot off and place the left foot back onto the ground. And now transfer your attention to the right side to lift your right knee into your chest once more and open your right knee out to the side, placing your right ankle on top of your left thigh. Your hands can be resting palms down on the floor or they can be resting onto your abdomen. But once more, just very gently sway from side to side, both knees. This additionally starts to massage across your, almost your sacral area. And again, it's opening your inner groin, so part of your lymph system, and just connects into that piriformis muscle. The piriformis muscle is very, uh, can mimic love and um, sciatic nerve and be implicated in lower back pain. Not in all cases, of course, but it, there is that crossover. And then supporting your right leg underneath the thigh to lift your right ankle off the floor, placing your right foot back down onto the floor, and breathing in, raise your arms above your head, your chin tucks down, and then carry on stretching out your legs so that you're lying, arms above your head, you can clasp your wrists, stretch your arms, stretch your ankles, extend your heels away from you, one ankle, one heel extends, and then the other heel extends. And just try crossing your wrists over so that you're holding your wrists slightly differently again. Really stretch, stretch your arms away from you, stretch your legs, and then breathing out, release your arms back down alongside you and bend your legs. Just one leg and then the other leg. So that you're holding both knees. Once more rock from side to side. And then hugging your knees into your chest. 
breathing out, still holding the knees, let your knees drift away from you. Hugging your knees into your chest, let your knees drift away from you. Hug your knees into your chest and let your knees drift away from you. And once more, hug both knees into the chest, hold, and then let your knees drift away from you. And now either rock up to a seat, you can roll to the right, away from your heart, come into So come to bring the soles of the feet together in Vajrakanasana. And those of you familiar with classic yoga poses will know that for this you would hold your feet literally coming forward, your hands are over your feet, your toes. But you can also slide your hands back to massage your instep, your under your soles of your feet. And if that's bending you too far forward, then lift up slightly further and draw your hands back to hold your ankles. And this again is opening the inner thigh. So it's opening the um, lymph system, the energetic flow system. So connecting into your lower immune system. So it's very helpful. You can, in your boosting your immunity, you can bend, just wave your knees up and down. And then come to um, a gentle cross-legged position. Lightly tuck your fingers either side of you. You can even just lift the flesh out from under your bottom. Touch your hands either side. This lengthens your spine. And breathing in, raise one arm. Tummy comes in. Engage your perineum up. And slide to one side. You can either look up, or that's not great for your neck. Look ahead, or even look down at the mat. And your elbow can also come down to the mat. Just feel a stretch along one side. Press down with your hand or elbow to lift you up and lower that arm. And then raise the other arm up. Tummy or lower abdomen comes in slightly to the backbone, so it's about 10 or 20% engagement. And then just very gently come over to the side. Looking ahead. Press down with your hands, lift you up, and then lower your hand. Breathing in, raise the arms up to shoulder height, and then turn the palms upwards, and see if you can get your little finger almost to lift up. Then rotate your palms downwards, and lower your hands. Breathing in, almost like a seesaw, raise the arms in one direction, diagonally. Come back to the centre and then seesaw over to the other direction. And then come back. Just comfortably rest your hands on your knees, high the palms down or palms up. And imagine just looking, keep your head still, but just look up with your eyes as far as you can go upwards, almost like 12 o'clock. Keeping your head still, lower your eyes to 6 o'clock. Bring your eyes back to your centre and move them to 9 o'clock. Bring them back to the centre and move them to 3 o'clock. Come back to the centre. Look at 10 past the hour, coming through the centre, looking to 22 the hour. 
come to the centre. Look at 10 to the hour. Come through the centre of your clock, your imaginary clock, and look to 20 past the hour. Then just close your eyes for a second to just rejuvenate your eyes. This is just a mini eye exercise, and then open your eyes again. The eyes are a muscle like anything else, and they can be um, exercised. And as we get older, our eyes can tend to get not lazy, but they don't necessarily move to the full rotation. So you might find that looking at something in the 70s, like 25 past or 25 to, five past and five two, or right on the edge of the circle. And you might find that you feel that a little bit more. The other point before we leave the eyes is that if you splash, you can bear to splash your face with cold water, the coldness of the water makes the eye muscles contract and it um, just engages your eye muscles. So it is a boost for the eyes. And also, I perhaps should mention that what we eat, our diet, very much affects effectively our eyesight. And it would be terribly boring, but for any illness, but including the eyes, if you had a diet for six months of nothing more than warm rice, vegetables, maybe like chicken and fish, lots of warm uh, teas to drink and you have nothing more than that for six months your eyesight combined with exercises gentle stretches would improve massively however having said all that it's much easier said than done and i do recognize that but it's just a thought of an eye focus today and finally before we leave the eyes the eyes are connected energetically to the stomach and to the digestive system. Our eyes really very much linked to what we eat. And before we leave the eyes, just lengthen your body, sitting up. Take one arm across your body to hold the other arm going and breathe out as you turn. So this works on the samana energy or the navel um, digestive system connecting to the eyes. Breathing in, lengthen and breathing out, turn. Your head is the last thing to turn. Take an in and an out breath here. Coming back to the centre, lengthen the body. And breathing out, bring the other hand across the thigh to turn or across your body to turn to the other side. Just check that your shoulder is away from your ear. Breathe in, lengthen your body and in your own time as you breathe out, turn. And both the stomach and the eyes connect the element of fire. So fire connects, um, it's easy to think of your digestive system, the agni, the, um, the, the fire of the digestive system the transformation of food into something that is useful for our bodies. Come back to the centre and let's just very gently slide your hands forward. So lengthen your spine and then slide your hands forward as little or as much as you like. Come to me into cat. And we begin to connect the spine warming it up. Your hands are shoulder width apart, and you're pressing down or engaging your thumb and your second finger, particularly, but all your fingers should be stretched out. And your knees are hip width apart. Breathing in, dip your back. And either look up or along the back, depending on where you are with your neck. Breathing out, round your back. Your chin comes to your chest, activating the vagus nerve, which is a deep, deep inflammation posture. Breathing in, dipping your back, 
It's calling for the nervous system to, to bring your chin forward. Breathing out, ground your chin to your chest. It also engages something called the general dollar around it. It's an energy seal. And one more time, breathing in, dipping your back. Stay with your back dipped and just dip your elbows and straighten them. Feel the extra stretch on your lower abdominal muscles. Dip your elbows and straighten them. And now round your back, chin to chest. Tuck your toes underneath. Engage your lower abdomen towards your spine by about 10 or 20% of your capacity. And engage your perineum upwards to support you so you're effectively engaging the Muladhara and the Udiyana Bandha, your, your energy seals are on, and then lift one knee and the other to come into a very soft downward dog and then extend your legs and feel that you can move your feet within downward dog. Bend both knees, lengthen your spine and then straighten your knees. And now walk your hands to your feet, your feet to your hands to come up to gently the top of the mat. Bend your knees, press your feet down and roll up gently, vertebra by vertebra to standing. So we come to the heart centre. Raise your arms up, stretch your fingers, your thumbs come towards you and your little fingers go away from you and lower your hands. Inhale, exhale, hands together at the heart centre. Inhale, hands up. Either looking upwards or looking ahead, breathing out, bend your knees, bend your elbows, and come to forward, hands either side of your feet. Inhaling, step back with your right foot, keep high, left foot. You're in a high plank, extend your heels upwards, and now straight away bend your knees back down to the mat. Come to your elbows and slide along the mat to come to line and stretch your hands out in front of you. You can even tuck your toes underneath to extend one leg up and then the other leg, relaxing the legs back down to the ground. Slide your hands towards you, place your hands really just underneath your shoulders and your elbows are up to support your weight as you press down on your hands to come up to kneeling. Tuck your toes and come straight away to a downward dog. Separate your feet to your preferred hip width apart or wider and walk the dog by bending one knee and then the other knee. Swaying your hips from side to side. This Swaying from side to side and downward dog. Um, a downward dog is classified as an inversion, so it's rebalancing for the endocrine or hormonal system. Bend both knees now, coming back down to the earth. Move your hands to the left, and that gives space for your right foot to come up, hands either side of your right foot. Engage your lower abdomen in slightly and the perineum up slightly. Tuck your back left toes, lift your left knee, and either step or slide your left foot to your right foot, and place both hands on your shins. As you breathe in, lengthen them from the tailbone all the way to the top of the head, your chin is in. Breathe out, bend your knees and bend your elbows out. Breathe in, press your hands on your shins. Stay here as you breathe out, and breathing in, soften your knees. Press your feet down as you roll up vertical by vertical to standing. And then when you're standing, roll on up with your hands to lift your hands up, looking ahead or up. Stretch your fingers and breathing out, lower your hands. Lift and roll your shoulders and clasp your hands behind you, aiming your knuckles towards the ground. Opening your shoulders. And in this pose, you can look up. If you want to, it's optional. Now bring your head to centre, separate your hands and slide your hands down the backs of your legs as you bend your knees to your, so your hands come once more back down to the ground and step your left foot back, 
you're saying hi, right foot back, you're in plank, tummy in, heels upwards, you're in a straight line, perineum engages up, and then bend your knees straight away back down to the ground. And carry on to line fully on the ground, stretching your hands out in front of you. Really feel that stretch. You can tuck your toes underneath to increase the stretch and open you at the front of the hip. One foot and then the other, and then just untuck your feet. Slide your hands back, hands on the ground, shoulders in. Press your hands down into the earth to support you as you come up once more to kneeling. Tuck your toes underneath as you then carry on to come into a downward dog. Feel that you can adjust your feet in downward dog. Wider and your feet can come close to one another. Bend your knees, lengthening along your spine, and then straighten your legs. Your heels don't have to touch the ground, but they aim towards the ground. Bend your knees and then straighten your spine. And then you can walk the dog, one knee bends and then the other. You have the option to sway your hips from side to side. The inside of your elbow should be aimed towards one another, which secures the top of your shoulders inwards. No chance of, uh, it's, it's a perfect postural alignment. And then bring both knees back down to the ground. Untuck your toes. Your hands now go to the right, which gives space for your left foot to come up. Your hands go either side of your left foot. Feel that you're stretching forward. In this position, you can go beyond 90 degrees with your knee because your body is supporting your weight. But then to come up, come back to a 90 degrees, secure your positioning, tuck your right toes under. By the way, coming forward like this is um, stimulating the pancreas uh, as an aside. Bring your knee back to 90 degrees, tuck your right toes under, engage your perineum, engage your tummy in. Lift your right knee up and step your right foot to your left foot. Press your hands onto your shins as you inhale, breathing in, lengthening all the way from your tailbone to the top of the head. Breathing out, bend your knees, bend your elbows. Chin comes to chest. Breathing in, lengthening again from the spine to the top of the head. Stay here as you breathe out. And then breathing in, bend your knees, press your feet down as you were up vertebra by vertebra to standing and carry on raising your hands up, looking either ahead or straight up and breathing out there are your hands. So the next round, slightly quicker, inhale, exhale, hands together at the heart centre. Breathing in, hands up, breathing out, roll down. Step back, keeping high, right foot, left foot, drip plank, straight line. Bend your knees, come to kneeling, come to line. Spread your hands out in front of you. Slide your hands back, elbows in, press down, come to your downward dog. Knees better than that. Right foot, tuck your toes, left toes. Left foot comes to right foot. The shin is lengthening, breathing, breathing, lengthening. Stay here as you breathe out and breathing in, press your feet down, rolling up, stretching your arms up. Breathing out, lowering your hands. Lift and roll your shoulders, clasping your hands behind you. Aim your knuckles towards the ground, opening your shoulders at the lung radians as your shoulder joins the arm and shoulder join. And then separate your hands, slide your hands down, your legs, hands outside. You just keep high as you step back. Left foot, right foot into a high, high plank, strengthening, heels up. If that's too much, you can always come to your knees, but now come to your knees. Come out. Slides back, elbows in, press down, coming to 
You're done with dog. Feel the stretch along the backs of your legs. You can walk the dog, you can bend both knees and straighten them. Spending the knees lengthens your spine and then when you straighten it, it just realigns you. Bending your knees, lengthening along the spine and then straighten them. They don't have to be completely straight, of course, but just aiming for that shape. And then bending both knees back down to the ground as your hands go to the right. Your left foot come hands on the side of your left foot. Come forward, it's a pancreas stimulation. Spleen as well. Come back with your leg to 90 degrees, tuck your right toes, engage your perineum, abdomen back to the spine, lift your right knee, step your right foot to your left foot, hands on the shin. Breathing in, lengthening, breathing out, bending in, chin to chest, elbows out. Breathing in, press your hands on the shins. Stay here as you breathe out. And then as you next breathe in, soften your knees, press your feet down, and roll up vertebra by vertebra. Standing. Clasp your thumbs and just sway, swaying tree from one side to the other. It's a Vata movement, anti-pain. Um, there's a long explanation behind that, but anyway, come to the center and lower and roll your shoulders. Back, bringing your hands to the center and we leave the heart and move on up to the throat area. And if you bend on knees, come back to the mat, lying on your back, knees bent, feet hip width apart, And we're going to start, once you're down, you can always press your feet into the floor to lift your bottom and just realign you. Palms are down to support you. Your shoulders are away from your ears. Your chin is slightly tucked in or your neck is long. And we'll start with a pelvic tilt. So flattening your back as if you were going to lift your bottom and then just releasing your back. So there's, there's a little space under your back. A pelvic tilt movement. It um, is a very safe way to mobilise the spine, but we've already done that. So the purpose here is to prepare for a rolling bridge, but it also is moving the abdominal energy around. So next time, just press your feet down into the ground, lift your bottom, engage your perineum upwards, your tummy will naturally come inwards to the spine. As you press down, as you go up, however much you want to, make sure your knees aren't splaying out, and then raise your arms up above you, your chin really does tuck in, and stretch your arms behind you. They can touch the floor, if they don't touch the floor, that's fine. And then breathing, out, start the breath out and then lower your hands and then lower your bottom back down to the ground. Once your bottom is down on the ground, hug your knees into your chest, extend the soles of the feet to the ceiling, extend your heels, bring your palms together through that you've created, either stay here or you can lift your head either holding your palms together or dropping a hand behind your head to support your head and neck as you lift up, breathing out, release back down to the ground. Lifting up is always optional. Hug your knees into your chest and replace your both feet back onto the ground. Hands, palms down alongside you. And when you're next ready, press your feet into the ground once more. Lift up as little or as much as you like. If you lift up a lot, you can bring your shoulders underneath you to tuck them in and then lift your arms up. It's a more pronounced rolling bridge. And then breathing out, lower your arms and bottom of your vertebra back down to the ground. You could always have a block between your knees to make sure that they're going to splay out or a belt across your knees to make sure of that. 
and then hug your knees into your chest once more. And soles of the feet again go up to the ceiling. Extend your heels. That heel extension activates the inside of your legs. That's something called the psoas muscle, P S O A S. With long muscle and can often not engage properly, not support us properly. And then palms of the hands together, optional to lift up, either just lifting your head or dropping a hand behind to support your head and neck, breathing out, coming back down, hugging the knees into the chest. And this time, drop your hands, slide them down your shins to hold your ankles. So you come into a sort of supine Vadakanasana or cobbler's pose. And if you want to extend a little bit further, then take hold of your big toe with your second and third fingers and open your legs outwards. This is all optional, by the way. If this is not accessible to you, then no problems. You're just coming, you, you just hold your legs wherever you can, the inside of the thighs to rock from side to side. But if you can hold your big toe, that's brilliant but no worries if you can't, and just rocking from side to side, wherever you are, whether it's here or here or here. And then bring your knees together, hug your knees into your chest. Keep your knees hugged into your chest and place your palms down alongside your bottom. You can even just rock from side to side so that your bottom is almost on your back of your thumb, but just close to your bottom. And then raise both legs up to the ceiling. Then relax. Your knees are softly bent. And imagine you're like um, a strand of seaweed in the sea, just basically waving as the tide or the water laps around the seaweed. It's just a very, very gentle uh, inversion. You could have rest in your entire bottom onto a cushion or a bolster and that's incredibly relaxing and it's something you find a lot in Tibetan yoga that supported um, inversion and then bending both knees into your chest and just supporting your knees as you place your feet back down onto the ground and then extending your feet in asana if you prefer to keep your knees bent then please do and just physically crunch your toes, curl them in and release. Just move your feet from side to side. Tense your knees and release and relax. Tense your bottom and release and relax. Tense your hands and your arms and then release, making sure that you relax your shoulders away from your ears. Physically lift your chest up away from the mat and then just as consciously place your um, chest back down, flatten out onto the ground. Just bring your shoulders up towards your ears and just as consciously then bring your shoulders down back away from your ears. You can open your palms upwards as an invitation. You can turn your head gently from side to side. And now two things. One, your thought or wish for the day, your sankalpa. Think of something that you wish for yourself or for somebody close to you for the day ahead. And mentally repeat that a couple of times to set the intention for the day. And now let that thought go, knowing that the intention has been set. And mentally choose any colour that resonates with you today. And imagine like a little bit like an auric egg that you are surrounded by your colour of choice inside and outside, wrapping and cocooning you for the day. And only positive things can come in, negative things can flow out, but nothing negative can come in, only positive thoughts and positive things. And then let that image go. It's again set for the day. And you can either stay where you are, relaxing on the mat, just letting the drain drift, the next few minutes drift away. Or if you want to come to the end of the class, then just move fingers and toes, 
and then hug one knee and then the other knee into your chest, rocking once more from side to side. And this time, just to make this a very soft ascent for the body, there's no um, effort, you can roll away from your heart if that's available to you, which is rolling to the right side, your heart is more on the left side. And just let the blood and the movement settle for a moment before you then place, press your hand down and gradually lift yourself up. Take time to reorientate yourself and to reposition yourself. No sudden movements at all. And then as you sit for a moment, if you're lying, then stay lying. Just imagine a circle at your third eye. And just for a moment, breathe in and out through the third eye. Breathing in knowledge, higher consciousness, and breathing out, if you remember, we can only, um, we can breathe out negative things, letting anything go. We only can accept positive things in for the day. And once more, breathing in through the third eye and breathing out. And then just gently let your chin slightly move down towards your chest. Bring your hands to your heart. And thank you very much for joining me today. Thank you.